Hello, guys. We are back. We are doing Merry Mantle Consecration today. Again, we are doing 46 days of this um, consecration. Every day is a different star, a star that we need to ponder on and we need to add to our hearts to have forever. So when the time arises, we can go back and remember our readings and Mary will strengthen us. Today it's sacrifice, the star number 44, the star of sacrifice. Not too many of us want sacrifice, but yet we want heaven. So how are we to get heaven and we're not going to sacrifice here on earth? How will we be worthy of heaven if we don't sacrifice like our Lord Jesus did for us? So it's an important star, the star of sacrifice. Now, before we go forward, here it is on her mantle. As you can see, we're almost there. And this image, if this is the first time you're joining us, there's an article to show you. Could not have been man-made. The microscopic, it was 500 years ago. Fabric would not have lasted 500 years. It's a miracle. The, the uh, image in her eye could not have been made 500 years ago. The amazing supernatural of this image that's in Mexico, it's below. Read it. Jeanette? Oh, no. It's my, I want to, we want to do our um, article before because we found that this makes our talks better. It keeps us more focused. The need for sacrifice. Catholics should get into the habit of making small sacrifices for God. Um, I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I want you to look in below and you'll be able to read the whole thing, but I'm going to point a lot of it out. Actually, we're creating small and large idols all the time. It's like uh, when we're looking at celebrities and we make gods of things we become addicted to, um, uh, our celebrities, our, um, uh, you know, beauty, all these things. Those are idols. We've got to get away from that. Um, Every time we're setting up strange gods, we know that in adoration, God is one of the most basics of our Catholic religion. Adoration is so important. I know it feels boring, but I'm going to tell you something. The more you do it, like yesterday I had adoration and I read the whole um, book of the prayers for priests. And I'm going to tell you something. I got such a great understanding and I did so much prayer for priests. Stop complaining about your priests and pray for them. Um, adoration always involves some kind of recognition of the absolute supremacy. I got so much from it. Um, take a little booklet with you about adoration and read it there. Uh, do whatever it is that you want to pray. Well, if it's for your family, go and pray that whole hour for them. I'm working up to six hours because that's what we're supposed to do in our consecration to the holy angels. I'm going to do it. We're about to have 24 hours in there and we have certain days we're supposed to, Thursday is an important day to pray for priests. Funny enough, it's when John Paul II did the luminous mysteries are added Thursdays. And there's a reason for that. All of the sacraments are on it. Well, not all of them, but some of the sacraments are on it. And the last one is the institution of the, of the um, Eucharist, which would not be possible without the priest. God set it up that way. You can't go to Protestant church and say, oh, a pastor is good enough. No, God set it up. So adoration um, is a, a, adoration is a sacrifice. Sacrifice an hour for God. Every day, sacrifice an hour for God. He gave you 24. You can't give him one back. Okay, first fruits. Uh, often when we pray, we proclaim our love and devotion. But St. Ignatius said, love is shown more in deeds than words. Um. A readiness to give up something for the love of God. Every time I fast, I say, there's a problem in one of my children's lives. I say, I'm giving this up for this. God, please heal this problem. Um, fix it. Every day I fast, I fast for one of my kids. Or, one, or even sometimes just another problem. But it's usually one of my kids because that's my focus. Um, uh, the object surrendered to God, destroyed and completely removed. Okay, I'm going to leave a lot of this for you to read. Um, mass is, okay, mass. The unbloody banner of sacrifice. It, uh, it's it been 
all this our whole you know two thousand years since its reoffering of Jesus on Calvary, the Mass is rightly referred to as the holy sacrifice of the Mass. That's what Mass is, not just Mass. It's the holy sacrifice of Mass. Um, uh, it's it's been replaced with the more general, vague liturgy. Sadly, and of course, Protestants say, well, we have a liturgy, but you don't have the sacrifice. Everyone can have a liturgy. They don't have the sacrifice. We have the fullness. They have pieces of the truth. Uh, every dimension does. Every dimension of human existence requires sacrifice. There are certain things to give up. But sacrifice to God, a religious sacrifice, is one that is freely given to God as a sign of reverence and submission to him. That's what you're doing when you're going to mass and adoration. Um, such sacrifices are very meritorious in the si sight of God. That's what counts toward your heavenly home up there. Because they are basically acts of love of God and what God wants from us more than anything else, love. When we love, we sacrifice. It's the definition of love, sacrifice. Love must be free. It cannot be forced. It cannot be bought. That's why God makes it, you know, uh, um, conf not confusing, but makes it something we have to seek. And he will only do, he will only reveal to you. If you seek, you say, well, God's not here. I don't see anything. You're not seeking him. That's why. If it's not being revealed to you, you're not seeking it. Because God says he will give you everything you seek. But you're not seeking it earnestly over and over and over and over. He wants to know that you mean it deep down in your soul. So when you say, but he doesn't answer my prayers. I asked him for this and he didn't answer. Oh, no, no, no. It's not that simple. You've got to every day ask him. He wants us to repeat our prayers over and over until it's deep down in our soul. And we're, the more obedient we are to him, the more he will answer our prayers. Catholics should get in the habit of making small sacrifices of God. Sacrifices come in thousands of different forms. Fasting, penance, various kinds, controlling vain curiosity to see and hear everything. All that news, I, I have to stop myself from watching that. And it's so hard because I love watching the news. And I, and I make myself, some days I say, you're not watching news today. You're too vulnerable. You can, you can know that. The more you pray, the more you recognize that. Um, giving up smoking or drinking during Lent. Getting up, giving up smoking and drinking at all times during during all times you can give up that. You know, if 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 it causes you a problem, pluck it out. If alcoholism causes you a problem, pluck it out. You don't need it. It's no good for you. It causes you to sin. Getting up early to attend weekday parish mass. Jeanette harassed me into doing all this. And now I get up early, no problem. And I'm like, are you ready? I'm sometimes ready before her, but funny enough. And I was so like, oh, but guess what? It's given me so much. Jeanette has helped me so much. I cannot tell you in my obedience and in my seeking God. Okay. Um, denying oneself sweet desserts on occasion and so on. If you are familiar with the life of any saint, male or female, young or old, you know what I'm talking about. There has never been a saint who did not practice some kind of sacrificial self-denial. That's what sacrifice is about. Denying little, little pieces. You don't have to do everything. Fasting, do apples in water. Or do start doing the intermittent where you slowly close the window until someday you can go with just apples. And then you slowly close it to no apples. It's steps. Little sacrifices. Thousands of ways. Our Lord said, if you want to be my followers, you must take up your cross daily and follow me. Those who try to lead a Christian life cannot expect to avoid what Jesus did not avoid, the cross. As many Christians, you'll be persecuted no matter what, whether you do right or wrong. You're, you're, you're going to have a tough life. So why don't you do right and, and make it a little better and at least offer those sacrifices for your heavenly home? Remember, it's just like saving in your uh, in your uh, thing, what do they call those investment things? Your investment invest in that as many christian writers have pointed out in the past the baffling thing about the cross is we all have to carry it whether we want to or not for those who accept and submit to god it's salvific for those who reject it it's an occasion of damnation we our cross can either lead us to god or not my cross led me to him i didn't know god i wanted to know him i wanted to understand him. 
It took evil for me to understand it. It took me looking in the eyes and being pursued by evil for me to get it. I was hard headed. I'm not anymore. Now I'm like, yes, God, I'm going to be obedient. Yes, you told me to do that. Your guardian angel can help you, but you got to listen. You got to listen for his voice. The more you pray, the more you will hear it. We should often pray for grace to be able to accept and offer up the crosses that the Lord send us. And damn it, don't deny your sins. Face them. Say you're sorry and move forward. Okay, Jeanette. Go. Do you have anything to say before we go or do you want to save it for after? Let's save it for after. It's, it's your turn to read. Oh, my turn. Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Sacrifice. Thank God my lung thing is healed so I can at least talk a lot more. A degenerative sacrifice, a degenerative disease, a lifeless sacramental marriage, a wayward child, a terrible injustice. What is the meaning of su such sacrifice and hardship? Of what use is it? When the very first human heart suffered, that was a, its cry. There is no one who in a moment of anguish has not asked the same question, either explicitly or in a confused way. The darkest tragedy, however, lies not in the suffering in and of itself, but in, the, in suffering uselessly. A girl is abandoned by her father and turns to heroin to ease her pain. She dies from an unplanned overdose with a needle still protruding from her arm, her cherished dreams dying with her. Such meaningless tribulation in and around us breeds and foments rebellion in the soul to the point we can become consumed with a futile resentment or blind rage against life and God. That's why I had to learn to forgive my father an alcoholic. When Jesus walked this earth, the turbulence and hatred raised in his footsteps were of such magnitude that his life, humanly speaking, went up in flames and turned to ashes, ending in unspeakable calamity and suffering. The difference, not a drop of his blood was shed in vain. Every flash of the whip, every blood curdling scream, ugh, every piercing thorn, the pernicious insult that stabbed him, was his offering of love for the salvation of the world. And every moment of our suffering is meant to be the same. This is the secret behind all redemptive pain and voluntary sacrifice. Come, take up your cross and follow me, Mark 8.34. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. Matthew 6.16a. Calculate the cost, Luke 14.28. Every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The possessions should not mean more to you than your life, and neither should greed beget them. Luke 14.28.33. Our suffering can save souls. Tell your story. Jesus came to heal and alleviate our needless and worthless self-inflicted pain. He will try at every turn to claim our attention and shout, wake up, this is needless. You are the cause of your agony. But when in communion with the suffering Christ, we offer to God our unavoidable sufferings, meaning is restored and rebellion melts away. So when you, your child has a genetic disorder, Remember, our genes are from our parents and they're carried forward. And a lot of it is from sin. And you are left with your ancestor's sin. What can you do? Be obedient. Take up that suffering. Follow him. And guess what? Consecrate your family so that the forward generations won't carry that weight. You're carrying that weight. Give it to God and it'll be obedient to him. You can't help what your ancestors did in giving you a genetic disorder, but you can move forward and accept that suffering, embrace it, use it for your sanctification. As we discover the salvific nature of personal sacrifice carved into the mystery of the cross, we are visited by a mysterious sense of peace and joy. The time is coming and it has already come when believers in the footsteps of the master will no longer be preoccupied with their personal pain but will stretch out their arms to embrace a suffering humanity 
and make its wounds their own. So you won't be blaming everything for your little lifetime. No, you're going to take that pain and transform it. And you're going to then work on others and sharing your story. And there was one part in here that I wanted to say something and I didn't. Oh, the rosary. When you do the rosary, I'm going to tell you something. As I have no longer depended on the video and, and doing it with the paper, I just have the acronyms now last to remember. I'm getting deeper and deeper into the mystery. And when I go through, like I think it was Friday, it was either Tuesday or Friday, because that's when we do the sorrowful. I felt every pain that Christ felt. And I thought, oh my gosh, every one of my sins gave him another lash. Oh my gosh, I need to sin no more because I love him. The closer you get to him, the more you say, I don't want to hurt Christ with my sins. And the more you say, I am not doing this. I'm not doing this sin because that will lead to more pain for my Lord. And I love him that much. And when you do the rosary, the deeper you get into it, the more you will feel it. That's why it's called gospel on a string. Don't be confused by it. Understand it's very important. Jeanette, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. Everything you said was perfect. I especially love the line where it says, but when in communion with the suffering Christ, we offer to God our unavoidable suffering, meaning is restored and rebellion melts away as we dis discover the salvific nature of personal sacrifice carved into the mystery of the cross. We are visited by a mysterious sense of peace and joy that's beautiful because um suffering you always focus on the peace and joy i love that thank you well it's because suffering you know god wants us jesus wants us to carry our crosses that's why he carried it such a long way to calvary that's why he suffered that horrific way to make it that anything we have in our life can't even compare to that and he did it out of love for us when he didn't have to so he's showing us he's he's leading the way for us we need to carry our crosses like him and we need to go to him we need to give him the suffering we're uniting it with his and giving it to him and, and don't, we, don't think he 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 um he asked god to pass the cup but he knew God's will was more important than his fear. And the, when, when I think of the agony in the garden, I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. His, his he, he cried. Fear. He cried blood. His, his terrifying fear. It just Because he my knew. Heart. He saw what was coming. He knew. It broke my yeah. heart. The, the rosary will take you into the agony of the garden. And, and little by little, the more you do it, the more you will be there with him and you will be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that you suffered like this. I'm so sorry for humanity. And yeah, and another thing. Sacrifice, you give up for yeah. that. You're so, I'm so sorry. Let me sacrifice for all those getting abortions. Every sacrifice you can give up and say, yeah, I'm not having that's what I was going to say. Okay, sorry. No, no, no. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say that you can give your sacrifice when your back is hurting or whatever. It doesn't matter how small. Lord, I give this to you for those souls in purgatory, or, you know, I give this to you for, you know, for whatever intention, you know, you just give up your your, your suffering. That's another form of um, mortification. That's mortification yeah. Yeah. in our faith. It's in our faith. We are supposed to have mortification and we don't understand what that is. We need to understand that mortification is sacrifice. It's our suffering that we give up to God, that we unite it with his. And that's mortification. We are not supposed to be uh, happy, feeling great all the time, go lucky Christians. We're supposed to um, fight the good fight. But joy is, he wants us to have joy. And that's oh, yes, where but, obedience comes in at. Obedience yes. comes in with the joy. But then you pray for others. 
Exactly. That's so yeah, that's, pretty, that's very good. That's wrapped up very well. And the uh, rosary. In sacrifice and in the rosary, living his life through the rosary, because that is what the rosary is, guys. You know, we're not praying to Mary. Mary is getting us closer to her son. In the middle of the Hail Mary is Jesus. And we take that pause because the Hail Mary, the whole Hail Mary is wrapped around Jesus. She is sharing her experience. She is sharing She is sharing his life. He's showing us. Yeah. She sacrificed her whole life. Yeah. yeah. She sacrificed so, every part of her life. She gave up for Christ, for us. She gave it up to save the world for all of us, not just for her son. We all sacrificed for our kids. She gave it up for the whole world because she, she, when I think of when I think of her, uh, when I do the rosary and I think of uh, her like um, crowning, I said, no one deserves it more than her. Don't dishonor our mother, Protestants. No one deserves it. She was the most obedient and would sacrifice more than anyone in this world. She sacrificed. Sorry. So guys, don't forget to say the rosary today, because by doing that, you're getting closer to the Lord Jesus yes. by saying the rosary. Um, and that will be day 44 that we have concluded and we are going to do two more and we will be at the consecration guys. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye.